Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, 75% of men over 40, wait, 40, or is it 40? How should we do that? 40. Over 40 are this type of avoidant. They're this type of avoidant, okay? Uh, really quickly, um, if you are interested in talking to a coach and you've been curious about that, check out the link below um, to schedule a discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. Okay, I got my pitch out of the way. 75% of men over 40, how do we do that? 40 <laughs> are this type of avoidance. Okay, so what's interesting um, for the over 40 category. So um, for those who follow my work, most of my area of expertise is centered around midlife, which I say is after baby making years and before retirement. So most of my clients are between the ages of 42 and 69. That's my typical demographic. Although I've been so grateful, a lot of 20 and 30 year old women are reaching out to me for advice, which is great because I'd much rather catch you sooner rather than later, at least helping you. But what's unique about the over 40 category um, is that roughly about 75% of singles who are, um, who are over 40 and that are actively seeking, um, you know, actively dating, actively dating, especially if they're using an online medium, okay, like a dating site, dating app, that sort of thing. 75% of those folks, and this is anecdotal, this isn't exact, but I've done a, my own independent study on this. 75%, I'm gonna answer the 75%, are divorced, are divorced. In fact, the majority of people over 45 who are actively single and looking for love, or I shouldn't say looking for love, they're looking for connection. Remind me to come back to that, the difference between connection and love, okay? But for those 75%, they're divorced. And with it, divorce brings about so much, typically can bring about so much emotional trauma that it makes it very difficult for some people to lean into a new relationship. Now, what's fascinating is there's a lot of people who go through divorce and they immediately marry someone else because they have a codependent personality type, about 25% of men will immediately marry the next person they meet because they have a codependent. In other words, they cannot literally be alone, okay? They're afraid to be alone and they literally say yes to the first woman they meet. And while that might seem great for a little while, it, I think the divorce rate for people on their second marriage that happens within the first two years of the ending of a previous one is something like 75 or 80%, the divorce rate. Because these are dysfunctional people choosing to be in relationship because they're afraid to be alone because of their dysfunction, only to have it blow up again. Okay, but you're asking, but I'm, you might be going, well, Jonathan, tell me about those 75% of avoidance. Okay, so there was the codependent that immediately rushes in. Um, let's make that 20% do that, not 25. It's more like 20% do that. The 75%. And this is true of both men and women. They're actually avoiding getting married again because of the emotional traumas that happened during the divorce. And there is financial trauma, emotional trauma, physical trauma. I guess financial and physical are kind of the same. But there's a lot of potential trauma associated with divorce that causes men as well as women to be avoidant of wanting to be in partnership with someone. So what do these people do? They seek what's called, they seek what Esther Perel talks about in her book, Mating in Captivity. I don't have a copy of it here because you know how I'm always showing books. Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel. She talks about something called stable ambiguity. Stable ambiguity, and that's basically giving just enough in this relationship to meet the basic needs of connection, companionship, and sex, doing the bare minimum to keep this relationship going. And that's what a lot of avoidant people do that are avoiding partnership, that they're avoiding 
uh, marriage. They're avoiding a serious relationship because they were so traumatized before, but they want connection. They want companionship. They want sex. So they're going to do the bare minimum in relationship. Okay, why is this so important to know this? Because ladies, the whole process of dating is a vetting process to decide to be in relationship. And the whole process of being a relationship is a vetting process to decide if you want to be in partnership. And ladies, you're terrible at the process of vetting guys to determine if they're good candidates. I've always said, you're, especially for you ladies that are listening to the feminine power and feminine lean back approach to relationships and allow the masculine to pursue you, allow the masculine to pursue. Well, that sounds great, but when you're talking dysfunctional men, you can't apply this rhetoric to what's going on right here. How do you vet these guys? Well, that's what I teach in my private coaching. I teach you how to vet to determine if this is a really good candidate and be in relationship. It's not your feminine energy isn't going to change a dysfunctional guy, an avoidant guy. You cannot change it. Now, you can temporarily by Leaning back temporarily cause an anxious uh, trigger within him, an abandoned trigger that might have him lean in just a little bit, just to get you back. But trust me, if he doesn't fix his dysfunction, it's never going to heal. It's never going to sustain the relationship. Leaning back only temporarily as a band-aid brings him closer to you because all you did was trigger him. Because think about when you get triggered. When a guy pulls away, what happens to you? You get triggered and you want to bring him back, okay? So, of course, if the opposite happens, if you triggered his uh, anxious attack, if you trigger his abandonment issues, he might, he might lean back to get you, but it's only temporarily because he has to work on the deeper stuff that caused him to become an avoidant. And until most people that have gone through a divorce have healed through their divorce and hopefully have an amicable relationship with their ex-spouse, it's a problematic relationship. We are dealing with baggage of people. We're dealing with luggage. And ladies, you've heard me say this over and over again, before you allow a penis into a vagina and before you allow right oral sex with one another, learn how to vet guys better. Learn how to vet for those high quality guys that I talk about who've done the work versus, hey, choosing the low-hanging fruit guys. And no disrespect to those guys. What I'm saying is, hey, if we're wounded, work on healing. Work on healing and then choose to be, at least pursue a relationship. You don't have to be healed to be in relationship, but you have to be healing. And that's my invitation. It's one of the reasons why I recommend my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? For you and for them. Because when we're coming from a heart-centered place of loving on ourselves, we're in better capacity to be in a relationship. And if you watch my video, I have a video called Men Need This to Be in Relationship, you're going to get a better sense of that as well. So 75% of men, oh, by the way, I said 20% are codependent, 75% are avoidant because they are afraid of marriage again. And then there's the 5% who have done the work to heal and they're going to lean back into wanting to be in a healthy happy relationship and while not everybody it, it's hard to find those five percent a lot of those guys in the 75 percent are getting there they're getting there they're getting there and it's and it's okay to invest those guys but you got to find the guys who are doing the work versus the ones who are so wrapped up in their dysfunction that they're going to repeat their patterns with you over and over again if you've heard me talk about the book Getting the Love You Want by Harvell Hendricks. That's going to explain why those men choose those women over and over again. And it's why you choose those men. So read that book as well. All right. I've said a mouthful. My mouth is dry. <laughs> All right. If you have a question for me or if you want to... Actually, if you have a question, uh, check out my VIP group, Midlife Love Mastery. It's a VIP group. Check out the link. You can actually join my group for $7 for the first two weeks. Check it out because it's a great group and you get to ask me questions through a private Facebook forum that I have and monthly calls and that sort of thing. So check out Midlife Love Mastery. It's my VIP group. Ah, ah. 
I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan help hug bear hug of self-love i'm going to give you a big gigantic jonathan bear hug of love i'm going to ask you to turn to someone and give them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives thanks so much and wishing you a super duper wonderful fantastic day bye-bye now